Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-46. In our last episode, the party met Captain Apair, an old friend of Grish. The Captain of the Republic is flamboyant and appears to be no threat to the party. While taking most of them drinking, Harris returned to the inn only to be diverted to Sarcona's hut, where Yolanda was released into his care with the news that Phidias would be ready to travel the following morning. The pair caught up to the rest of the group at the Brass Dinghy, where we rejoin them now. The leering from the drunken sailors were both obvious and disconcerting, considering Yolanda Two-Blade's state. She and Harris the Mage made their way through the crowd easily after Captain Apair ordered his men to stand down, to which they quickly complied. The well-dressed sea captain pulled forth a chair and gently kissed the hand of the skeptical fighter. Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, spoke. Yolanda Two Blades, this friendly man is Captain Apair, a friend of Grish. He is in charge of the Republic, the vessel that moved silver between Tigos Vale and Sadown. The warrior greeted the man, but was warned by Grish to be careful. He bites. Apair took mock offense of the scorn and kissed Yolanda's hand again smoothly, retorting with, only when requested, my dear. Yolanda jerked her hand away, causing both the captain and the cleric to laugh hysterically. A warm tankard of spice ale arrived from a serving wench who subsequently took Yolanda's order. Brother Stance spoke and inquired about how the fighter came into the care of Sarcona, as Phidias was the one that needed help when the group had split. She explained the encounter with the Knowles and confessed that the fall did little to help her memory. She confirmed she woke up in the woman's care with a nasty lump along her hairline. This caused Captain Apair to begin to display a plethora of scars incurred in what he called misunderstandings throughout his time on the high seas. Despite the bravado shown, Yolanda refrained from showing too much interest in the man, and he quickly picked up on it, entertaining himself with the barmaid as she returned with the food. Yolanda inquired about their route of travel, and was happy that the knoll threat had been resolved. She chided herself for not spotting them, but Omel added that the humanoids were well concealed when they had encountered them as well. She confirmed that she was fit to travel, and explained that Phidias should be well by the morning, according to Sarcona. As Grish and Apair caught up on their respective lives, the other four discussed options. Yolanda was warned that they were attempting to avoid any green guard encounters due to the hasty retreat from Saydown, and added that it was a wise choice. After Apair got up to drain his bladder, Omel turned to the Zenobian and asked when he wanted to discuss the master plan. The smile drained from the man's face and nodded that he was neglecting the problem. As Grish looked up, he spotted Apair stopping to play darts with a comely young woman of the world. Knowing that his friend would be busy for a while, he joined the group and discussed his thoughts. After several minutes, the group nodded their heads in agreement. So, began Grish, Tomorrow, we'll pick up Phidias, grab our mounts, and head north to the swamps where Pellet grew up. If we're lucky, we find an answer. Uh, I lost my mount, replied a dejected Yolanda. Stance put his hand on her shoulder and advised that they had picked up an extra one just in case. Yolanda perked up, but let out a big <gasps> yawn. Maybe we should call it a day, remarked Grish. I'll say goodbye to Apair, and we can return to the inn until the morning. The group attempted to settle the tab, but the barmaid pointed out that Captain Apair insisted on paying the bill himself. She thanked them after receiving a good tip and asked if there was anything else the group needed. 
Stance began to speak, but he was shoved from behind by Omel, who told the woman, perhaps next visit. The group exited the tavern and wandered back to the inn. Brother Stance gave up his room and stayed with Harris the mage so that Yolanda could have a bed of her own. The next morning, each one ate in their room, then gathered outside waiting for everyone to meet. Harris was the last to appear, and it was obvious he had had a rough night on the floor, but he did not complain. Okay, said Grish. We've got our mounts. Let's get that gnome and get out of Tigos. The group nodded and began to head up to the edge of town, where one of the old men ran up to them. Hey, General, the man spoke to Grish. It's Captain, and what can I do for you? The old man leaned over, trying to catch his breath before speaking. Just wanted to let you know that your friends arrived on a second ship. They'll be ashore in just a few minutes. You better be ready to hide. Yolanda was puzzled and asked what he was talking about as the others quickly mounted up. Green guards, said Harris. We gotta get out of here. Yolanda hopped atop her mount and the group sped to Sarcona's hut, where she was waiting outside with a diminutive Phidias who looked nonetheless worse for wear. I know of what you seek, Zenobian, said Sarcona. You will find the answer in the northern swamp, but must hurry. Grish started to speak, but the witch confirmed she was aware of the troops landing. As Phidias started for Yolanda's Kanta, Sarcona grabbed him around the neck and held out her hand. Oh, yeah, I nearly forgot. I was looking at this bobble and it must have accidentally fallen into my pocket. He pulled forth a strange figurine and gave it back to Sarcona and slowly climbed aboard the ostrich-like creature behind Yolanda. As the old woman glared at him, she pointed out and said, As for the other, use it wisely. The rogue nodded silently and kicked into the sides of the mount, causing it to gallop forward with both he and Yolanda aboard. Grish started to speak but was cut off by the old woman. Go now, you don't have much time. I am sorry. The party quickly sped off on the Contas and headed north. Each took the opportunity to look back at the shoreline once they reached the ridge and saw a rather large battalion of troops offloading onto the shore. Sir Omo was the first to speak. That is a lot of soldiers, Grish. The lieutenant must have really not liked getting punched out by you. The group nodded, but Grish pointed out that those troops are only sent out by the king himself. A few hours into the journey, it was Phidias that discovered the animals had been packed with some food and water. Look under the back of the blanket on these creatures. Someone packed us some grub. Stance and Harris remarked that they too had discovered some meager supplies and noticed they didn't even realize there were blankets on the animals when they had fled. After a short rest, the group continued north and Grish advised that they were an hour away from their destination. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.